So you may be asking right off the bat, well, this is probably something too expensive that really I can't really afford to do and uh, just to hell with this whole thing. Absolutely not, because that was one of the things I went into this doing because I didn't really have the money to spend $600, $800, $1,000 on a whole like crazy camera system that had it really built in and just kind of more of a plug and play and just called it a day. And we'll get to all that stuff. And so with that said, I do want to say that if you just want to jump to the various parts and everything in this video, absolutely. I do spend the time and put down the different markers so you can just jump through, jump to things that you want to see and you want to do in your particular setup. We're going to jump into looking at the camera that I chose for this and it doesn't really break the bank on doing things because you do a lot of the stuff in the software and kind of keeps it open source and out of the cloud which is what we like to do here. So we're looking at the this is the Lorita or I just want to say Lorietta but you can get them off of Amazon and but this is like the white box rebranded version it's just by Daiwa and of course you can flash the firmware for Daiwa on it and it's just the same model number and everything so no worries there it is a very big camera but with that comes a big lens and big optics and that's what this is the zoom is nuts and I'll put the some of the specs on the screen there. I tell you what, I'm truly impressed with everything you can do and pick up with this thing. It reads plates pretty far. Now it isn't magic. You got to play with some of the settings and everything, but we'll go through some of that, some of the stuff I did and how to pick up some various plates. It's going to be different for every installation, of course. So out ground alarm in yes that's your alarm pins if you want to use those audio out power and audio in i probably won't be using any of these because we're just going to do the thing over the cat5 which will do the data and the power over ethernet mounts always seem to be an issue with some cameras i don't think it's going to be an issue with this one because you've really got this one little screw here that it shows the lock and unlock. All right, so once you do loosen it, it's your standard little ball joint. So if you want to mount this and go upside down and do your thing, it turns back and forth, all the different motions, you can pivot it here. And the only other thing I really saw that if you wanted to ground it, they do have a little screw for a ground there. And the blue tape, I was just covering up my Mac ID and serial, so no one tried to register it and do the warranty thing and be a troll. Now, there are multiple ways to do this. So if you're doing this in your particular area and you have a setup of, say, a camera, software, hardware, whatever it may be, definitely let me know down in the comments down below. I'd love to see all the different setups because there really isn't a best setup for this because... The best may be that you just call a company and have them do it and spend a couple thousand dollars in a whole setup and that's the best for you. That's not the best for me because I just don't have that budget to do that and I want to do kind of more of the DIY thing. So I'm going to show you one of the setups that I did and I would love to see what everyone else is doing out there for doing the ALPR or the automatic license plate reader and doing some automations in your home because it's pretty cool being able to just see a license plate and trigger some automation that hey someone's coming home or someone left whatever coming in the driveway pretty awesome stuff and we're going to show you how to do that with some of the software. So one of the first softwares that you'll find is open ALPR. And I'm like, hey, that's awesome. It's open. It means open source. I'll be able to go put in a Docker container, some sort of add-on, home assistant, whatever, and just install that software and call it a day, right? Well, that's where things get different. So you already see when you do get started, the whole thing of open just changes quickly because you create an account, choose a plan, 
Really? We have sort of a problem here. And yeah, it is $8 a month, but I will say potentially you get what you pay for because yeah, the whole open source thing and everything. Well, we'll get to that in the little different section of the video here. So they, I did install because it was pretty simple to do. They have a d bunch of different software installations. The one I installed just because it was simple was the Windows one and had it run on my computer. And it does work real, pretty well for the most part. I mean, you can go in here and go to the dashboard and you can see all the particular cameras and everything. Now this is on their website. So it, of course, the website is called cloud.openalpr. They have a bunch of different options to do things, but I really didn't dig into it a whole lot because there's all that cost that, you know, and that's eight bucks a month of recurring revenue. But hey, I guess you are paying for the development of being able to all the different models and everything to be able to see the different plates and whatnot. I mean, when you do click one, it does pull up and show you the highlight. You can come in and search for different plates. And these are just random plates I'm looking at. So, hey, this, if you're probably thinking, well, privacy stuff, and you shouldn't be showing people's plates on the internet or whatever, you could come sit out on the corner. I would suggest if you want to do that, probably go out on the highway. You're going to see a lot more license plates than what you would see in just my neighborhood. So that'll get you even more data if you sat out there and took pictures and you can put them on the internet too if you'd like. It's a public street. So it is pretty neat on here. They do have all the different plates and everything. And I did find that the recognition was pretty good. And the little agent that runs is pretty nice as well. And I know you, you, the big brown truck, as you can see right here, I saw that it did pick up even the license plate on there. And there's some other ones I saw that where it had some other numbers and phone numbers, and it still picked up the license plate out of there. So you are getting that additional, I guess, model that they've gone through and fine tuned things to actually get the license plate out of there. So there's that option and everything. If you want to go through there and do the whole open ALPR and if there are some other ones that admit, maybe some other way you can use their software without paying I'll continue to look through that but one of the ones I did want to mention that was pretty awesome because we do a lot of home assistant stuff here is talk to the him in discord and I kind of saw some of the issues in my scouring of the internet trying to find something that was just pretty simple to install and wasn't going to be had that cost. I found a bunch of different guides that were like free, free. I was like, okay, free to start up maybe because it's a trial, but it's not really actually free. Well, this one actually is free. I guess based on, you know, you got to buy the hardware and the electronics, whatever, and the electricity, but the software, there's no license cost revenue per month. I'll use his handle on GitHub. I guess it's, Sclafalin, I guess you'd want to say, or S. Claflin. I'm not sure exactly what name he'd want to use, but he's done a great job. Now, I will say, and he does say it right here, that it is in the early stage of development. And being on GitHub, hey, if you can add to the different project and everything and do some additional pull request and add additional to the code, it's all open source right here. It is using Docker, Docker Compose. And he did actually go through and put in some awesome things of like Home Assistant Auto Discovery with MQTT. And it pulls over and does some awesome stuff, pulls in all the things into Home Assistant. And you don't have to do much. This is all just text. Comes over as a sensor so you can act on it. Now at times you can see here it just triggered. I was waiting for a vehicle to pass. The plate is okay on this one. And of course, as a human, we could read it ZWY636, but the particular model didn't do too well on that. So maybe there's a lot of tweaking, I think, that can be done on the open source side of things to really make this an awesome project. And so this is more of a proof of concept that's out there. It's not too hard to install. Like I say, it just plugs straight into it. This pops into auto discovery into your home assistant, it drops in the actual point of interest 
graphic at the bottom here and here's the full one if you want to go through and see all the different plates if you wanted to that's all just a, a sensor so you can trigger off of it it does go into mqtt so even if you're not doing home assistant you can just fire off and do things like with node red or whatever straight from mqtt really awesome job he's done there one other piece i did want to show that he did put in which was pretty awesome as he's put jpeg files all dropped in a folder he's got retention settings and if you just want to open up something and say well what is that what happened at whatever certain time it's just straight jpeg files so you can go through open up one he even has the license plate over in green and there are a lot of times i i run the frame rate i do i run 30 frames a second and it, it will pick up multiple files so even if you're you know double click one and you can see how it just continues to pick up the plate as it goes which is pretty cool you know you can pick up whatever plates you want to see and it does actually name the plate as the particular file name and the date and the time etc and it's all broken out into multiple folders and multiple folders per day and per camera because if you do have multiple cameras it will support multiple cameras he's really done an awesome job on the whole framework of things and he does have a gui where you can configure this in a gui but i did have some little initial issues setting that up and but once you do set it up in the using the little sample yaml files here it's really easy to do and there's even another feature i'm forgetting about right here is it does store everything in a sqlite database and so that's you can go dig back and go pull up history you can search for things it's all awesome in a database because if you're trying to figure out how many times did this particular license plate go across the camera in the past two weeks you can do that all the time stamps you can do all the things and yeah that may get a little big brother creepy if you're really doing that in your neighborhood so do be careful of because people will think you're going to be tracking their i guess movements and whatnot but hey i'm not that's not what i'm using it for i'm using it for is there a problem let's go back and look at it and then we can see how often that license plate was coming i mean it's really amazing documentation for evidence when there's a time of you know there's something done that wasn't lawful so mounting locations it's all about of course location 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 so my particular situation was this neighborhood is a one way in one way out which of course that creates your choke point so in this particular situation is this road is the one way one way out and the highways over here kind of just i would say probably another six seven houses down or whatnot so when you have to come in you have to come in down this road it's 25 mile an hour zone so i'm thinking my best place was i'll put the camera as far out as i can on the home that way i can catch the plate now we're in an area in this particular state that where we only have rear plates unfortunately and i know there's a lot of issues with uh, some states they have that front plate requirement and people still don't run them but hey that's all them and that would be great if I did have front plates because then I could see cars coming and going. Really, I would need to really do this right is probably have another plate reader at this home here and then somehow get that back over to my home using some wireless, but that's a whole nother deal. My thing is, if you come in the neighborhood, you're probably gonna have to leave the neighborhood. We'll still get your plate anyway if you do have a valid plate, but that's a whole nother ordeal. But so I put the camera here on the corner right there on the corner of the house right there so in the footage you see you and i'll probably run some through this so you just have to, don't have to look at monotony of me talking and everything in this stupid map you'll see that little mailbox and i've measured that mailbox it's about 140 feet i think that's 42 ish or 40 meters whatever i'm sure you'll do your own math on that for the other people using meters which is probably a lot of you the mailbox is about right here and that's a pretty decent distance for a camera to pull in the one i'm using has a really awesome zoom and not a digital zoom an optical zoom don't try the digital zoom and pointed the camera where i was catching right by that mailbox 
Figured that was a good place where I could get where the vehicles, and don't pick on my drawing too much here. I always sucked at artist stuff. I'm sure you can see that looking at some of my stuff on YouTube. So the cars that were going to be leaving is they had to come up this road here and they would have to turn, right? And so that's when I would catch them right there. Well, then the cars that were leaving, well, that's when I would catch them right there as well. And there's only two houses with driveways right here. And so if the car did go through here and then come back, well, then they would turn and then I would hopefully pick them up right there. So that was going to be my choke point that I was going to use. And that's what worked out well. I tried a couple different things and this one turned out to be the best for me. Now for the GUI, have some patience. There's going to be a few things in there that you're going to have to tweak. It may take you a couple evenings because that's when you're changing from daylight to evening and you just have to tweak some things. And yeah, I did cheat. Out here by this mailbox, which I've talked about in some of the previous sections, if you did skip those, is I did go park a car right here, kind of by this mailbox on the side of the road with the license plate facing back. And I, that's when I adjusted all my focus and did it during the day and did it during the night because it really got tedious of trying to wait for a vehicle to go back and forth and adjust things. So this is the web GUI on it. Of course, we're all local here. This is not a cloud camera. Now it's your regular Dahua setup got substream, mainstreams, whatever, but it's all 1080p. So I just use the mainstream of it. Now this is where things, I'm gonna show you some of the settings that I've gone through and this may get you to a good point. It's for the day is, I pretty much left most of it the same for the day settings. Now for the exposure, I left it pretty much all the auto and stuff. This is for the day one. Remember, I'll show you the stuff on the night. I did change with do HLC. I adjusted it based on what I found was some good median for doing the highlights. And because remember, you just want the plate. There, this camera is not going to be for anything else. It's just going to be for the plate. Get another camera, put it on the same area if you want to do other things. White balance, let it auto. Day, night, I left that as auto. The focus and zoom, where you want the focus is manual. Don't leave it on auto, trust me, because it'll constantly, as someone walks in front of it, it'll try to just adjust and you'll lose and you'll miss that license plate. And so just set it to manual. Now for profile management, the way you want this is you don't want to leave it full time. You want it to switch from day and night. So make sure you do pick day and night, hit the save button is on the picture. Now it may look funny because it just flipped to night profile during the day is the exposure. This is where it's going to get to be key is you're going to have to play around with some of these is based on the shutter speed and the gain, the exposure. Don't try to do it on auto. It's going to just, it, it's, it's bad. Just don't trust me. I, I, you'll go through and it'll try to set it for being light and you'll see more. It's not going to work out. And you'll be thinking, well, this is just a black screen during the night. Yes, that's what you want because that plate, when that infrared or any type of light hits that plate, it blinds the hell out of the camera if it's trying to see in the dark. And like I showed like with my son and you'll see how it tries to see everything else, but then the plate is just blinding and that's what's going to happen. Now, of course, you want another camera, do another camera like that. It doesn't need to see the plate because this camera is the one that needs to see the plate. Backlight. Went through, did 50 on that one, white balance, day, night, auto, focus. Again, make sure you do manual on your focus. And the illuminator, I left them full blast. Put them the far light, near light, did full blast. It may be too much for you. Try it out. Now, this is where it made a difference of trying to set my focus and everything. I'm probably going to screw up my focus, but I'll do it for you guys. Zoom and focus. It pulled up in the GUI. I forgot how I did that. You can see this camera zooms crazy. I mean, look at the picture right here and it can see everything. It's a great camera. So take note of this mailbox right here. Do you really think you could see a plate right there? This would be even zoomed out more with your regular home security camera. You're just not gonna be able to see right there. So take note of that mailbox. And so I'm sitting about half zoomed in right now. And 
the mailbox is okay, but hey, let's check it out. We'll zoom even further. And even, even further, we can zoom in. And I zoomed this all the way in pretty much so I could get that plate that I want to see. And now the focus is kind of out on it, but I'll set the focus. You can see, let's let this vehicle pass. See, I'm not getting a good focus on that license plate. And then once you got it pretty much focused, it's going to pretty much stay in. So you don't want to go through and let it try to autofocus and everything and messing with zooms and whatnot because you want to keep your settings the same and totally lock it in where it's not going to be trying to autofocus or do any type of zoom or whatnot because once you do go and get it tweaked, you, of course you don't want that to change. I'm using the H264H. I think that's for the high profile. I think it just allows for the higher bit rate. And the encoding strategy, I left it as general. If you want to go play with those other ones, I would just wanted a plain Jane recording the stream. Resolution, there's not much this camera. Leave it 1080p. This is key, I believe. 30 frames per second. You want more frames to catch more data. So in case there's one frame that the camera does didn't focus or whatever didn't come out with the plate, you'll have the next frame to grab that plate from. Another key point, constant bit rate. I don't like to use variable bit rate and you say, well, why? It saves data. But hey, if that codec doesn't ramp up in time to grab that plate, it's all pixelated. So keep it constant. And that's where I like to do that constant bit rate. So I could have done a higher bit rate that 8192, it's like eight megabit. I chose a happy median. Six megabit is doesn't need a whole lot. I mean, this is 1080p after all. I don't need an eight megabit, but you could run that as well. Now, I think they do have H.265. I was not using that because it has some issues with some particular different softwares, and H.264 is just simple. And this data is small because especially at night, you'll see it's just a black screen for the most part. So one little piece I want to cover is record your stream 24-7, 365. And why? Why do you say that? Because the best software to read plates is going to be the ones right there. You'll be able to pick out and know exactly what that plate is better than any type of computer. And there's no, there's no enhanced thing of trying to read plates. If you can't read it with your eyes, the computer probably can't read it either. So definitely bring it into some software that you can record RTSP and have some sort of retention of say a couple weeks or whatever on your hard drive and that way you can play back that footage. If you are going to use it in Blue Iris, there's nothing crazy to it. All I did was went in and hit configure and hit find inspect. It finds everything. It finds all the URL stuff for you. I did put mainstream and substream on here, and that way I could was doing some motion detection, but I did switch it over where I am doing a continuous record of all of my footage for the plates because, again, that's the ultimate way to go read a plate is just playing back that video footage. That's going to do it for this one. Again, if you're doing some different setup, hardware, software, whatever it may be, and doing some awesome license plate recognition without that monthly recurring revenue, definitely let us know down below. I'd love to hear some of the different setups you're doing. And hey, if you want to show some stuff and show some stuff off, come out and check us out in Discord. The link's down below as well. Some cool people over there. And hey, I do appreciate all the viewers, subscribers, Patreon subscribers. We couldn't do it without you because, of course, this was not paid by for anybody out there or anything is no sponsor at all on this video press all them buttons um. y'all let me hang him bro press all them buttons and try again <laughs> because you start with because here, here you're lying. because it's cool and stuff okay mm -hmm. nope press all them buttons because it's cool and stuff. Press all them buttons. Because it's cool and stuff. We do an explosion. Oh, you do an explosion in it? Yeah. Like, okay. And it like it explodes in us and then it, it <clears throat> and then we disappear. Wait. Press all them. Yeah, hit me right with. Press all them buttons. Because it's cool and.